You're listening to the Ballet Piano Podcast, lifting the lid on dance accompaniment. Hey there, podcasters, and welcome back to the Ballet Piano Podcast. I'm Matt Gregory, and as always, in the room is the podcast team, Chris Hobson. Hello. Akiko Hobson. Konnichiwa. And hashtag <laughs> David Yao of Instagram. Hello. Was Konnichiwa <laughs> just for the international crowd, or but, have you got particular friends at home that are listening to this? Well, I, so there might be a few Japanese listeners, so... I just wanted some Japanese fun. Okay, now, in today's episode, we will be discussing the plie exercise. And I think it's fair to say that when one thinks of ballet and ballet dancers, the plie is synonymous with that. Would you agree? Absolutely, yes, because it's the basis of everything that you do practically. Yeah, whenever one does an impression of a ballet yes. dancer, they, they do a plie, yes. don't they? Yes. So, David, what can you tell us about a plie? What is a plie? Right, so um, the language of ballet is French uh, because um, Louis XIV, uh, the Sun King, he was a very big admirer of ballet and he, he thought he was... He thought he was just fantastic. So if he did it, the whole court had to do it. And that's how ballet began in the royal court. So um, all of what, all the terminology is in French. So plié means to bend or bend. And what we're doing is we're bending our knees, our ankles and our hips. And uh, it's it's a, it's a one of the first exercises that you do usually in the day in the traditional bar exercises. Yeah. Do you love it? You get to love it. <laughs> <laughs> and so what is, what is a plie exercise? So plie is maybe the, one of the, let's say, first three exercises that you do in, in the bar, the bar exercises. We start at the bar, so you're more stable by holding on to something. And it's a very, uh, like the warm-up, it's a slow exercise generally. What you're trying to do is, that, is to feel the muscles that are going to be actually used when you jump. So um, we're bending the knees and we're using our lovely turnout muscles uh, <laughs> to, uh, to make the classical positions of first, second, third, fourth and fifth. And usually we use first, second, fourth and fifth. And more often these days, just first, second and fifth. Um, but you, use your, you bend your knees in a turned out position in all of those positions. And then we might finish or include in, in each of those positions a body bend forward, side, backwards. And often we used, we used to go onto the demi point, which is the, like up onto the balls of the feet to feel balance and to feel the, the muscles stretching. Mm. And so is the plie exercise primarily for warm-up? It is part of the warm-up, but more recently people have, have questioned where really it should actually be because it's very stressful on the legs. Okay. So... Um, um, if we think of a traditional bar, yes, it is at the beginning. Yeah. And we might start on a steady 3-4 or a slow 4-4. Four, four. Uh, and what you're trying to do is control the amount of bending that you do in your knees um, so that you're using more of the muscle fibres to guide what you're going to do later on when you start to move faster in class. Yeah. yeah. So can you sort of give us a quick uh, example of how you would set a play exercise? So what I would normally what, do... What you would give the musician or sh- and the dancers. Yes. So normally what I would do is I would think, because it's either the, the second or the third exercise, you're still in that kind of waking up kind of mode, really. So we would introduce the exercise by starting with a preparation of four bars or four counts of something. Like, say, if we were in a 4-4, four, four, we go 5 and 6 and 7 and... Eight. And on those fo- those very slow introductory counts, um, what we're trying to do is uh, alert the dancer to the actual tempo of the music, the, sp- um, the kind of the, the feeling of what they're going to dance to, and also so that they can actually prepare their bodies in a very stylized and controlled fashion. Yeah. And then we might do, um, let's say, uh, in the first position, uh, where we put the heels together and the toes are in opposite directions, almost you're aiming for 180 degree turnout, which is in opposite directions. The toes are uh, facing each other, and we might say, let's t- say, uh, I might say, let's have two demi plies. So we'd go in a four four. We go down. Let's go down on one and two. When we're coming up to stretch the knees, three 
and four. And let's do that again. So we do the same thing and we come back up again. And then I might say, let's do a full plie. And we might go use the same four counts to go all the way down to a demi plie and a full plie. So your bottom is practically on your heels by this time. And then we're coming up, put your heels down on the floor, seven, stretch your knees on eight. And then we might do a forward bend. So you might try and put your head near your knees now with stretched knees. And we're going forward for one and two all the way down, coming up three and four and we rise onto the demi point five and six lowering the heels seven and tondu that's stretching your leg to the side perhaps and lower on the eight so there's like one position of plies and then we might repeat that sequence in second position and fifth position Something like that. Okay. So um, you, usually in three or four positions. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. normally it would be in four positions. Uh, but as I said, more recently uh, to do with science these days, we find that the fourth position is a more exposed position uh, and it's, um, more, it's more difficult to do. So in terms of safety, uh, especially with the actual age of, of the student you're teaching or the dance you're, 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 you're teaching, uh, we tend to do like maybe three of those positions and then maybe we like to stay on demi point for a lot longer yeah. for that fourth phrase, shall we say. Yeah. Great. David, can I just ask you a quick question? Please. Three fours or four fours for plies, do you have a preference? Three fours. Three fours. <laughs> it's right, only because you just set it on a four four. And yeah. I realise I've known you for quite a few years now and I didn't know if you had a preference. Is there a reason why? Plies, when we describe plies to the students as a movement, we try and actually iron out the bits where they stop moving. So we try and think of, of plies as a circle. Okay. So the most, the most easiest um, time, time signature to use would be a 3-4 because it's more rounded. It's lilting, isn't yes. it? So you can yeah iron out those edges, yes. as it were. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I always think I prefer, and it's I think it's personal to me, I prefer 3-4 plies to 4-4 four, four plies. Me too. I don't yeah. know if it's just because we're exposed to them a lot more than 4-4s, four, mm. but I've always, I always think... I'm more comfortable in 3-4 than I am in 4-4. Four, four. I don't know what anybody else thinks. Because yeah. musically, it's smooth. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's have this flow. And then you can find, uh, quite often, I've worked with people who want to do plies on a 4-4, four, four, and I end up on a 12-8, so it's only oh, it's yeah. incredibly so, so it's almost like I'm playing a 3-4 anyway. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the melody is 4-4, four, four, but you've just got this triplet, yes. one, two, three, two, two, yeah. underneath. Yeah. And... It's, you know, it's to make space to, yeah, in it. To, to, give it to, to give the music time to breathe and support people yeah. who are, as you said, putting their bottoms on the floor. It's not a glamorous <laughs> job that people are training for, is it? So it's a difficult existence. Yeah. But you're right, Matt. You want, you want space in the music so that you can move smoothly and slowly without any jerky movements. Because it's still near the start of the class, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. So for our pianists, what do, you know, what do we think about plie exercises? I mean, what do we need from the teacher to play a successful plie? For me, it's how many um, movements you've got, um, how many positions, sorry. So is it three positions or is it four positions? And then are we going to stop at the end of the first side or are we going to go straight onto the second side? And then if the teacher set the tempo at the tempo we want, we've got all the information we need then because usually a position is going to be for 16 counts. For each yeah. position. For each yeah. position, yes. Yeah. So yeah. If you've got four positions that's 64 counts of 64 mm. bars of three four and then on to the next side you've got the same again yeah so like you don't it, you don't need uh, like a exact accent because it's kind of the same movement whatever the put you know the movement you're doing it's the same same kind of flow yeah whether you're doing a play over two bars or over four bars yeah. for me i'm not going to change the melody or the feel of what yeah. i'm playing because yeah. it's the the movement is still the same isn't it and it's not it's not a jarring movement that you do it it's not a choreographed movement that's you know jumpy or full of you know accents it's lyrical and smooth mm. i feel a bit nervous playing for plie because Somebody, I, I can't remember who, but somebody told me that if the pianist played really bad music for plie, they, that set the mood really bad for entire <laughs> class. <laughs> and since then, I've been really then. pressured yeah. playing for plie exercise. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, plies is that exercise you know you're going to get in every single ballet class. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I have a couple of go-tos and I have my greatest hits that I know will work yeah. for any plie exercise. And that's 
I'm using that play exercise then to work out the teacher for the rest of the bar. Right. If they're um, like your greatest hits and they're smiling, you know you're going to go down <laughs> a particular set of repertoire. Yeah. Um, well, it's just, funny. just we their all likes do the and same. preferences, really. We all do the same thing, don't we? You yeah. warm up in your play haze to work out yeah. musical preferences for your teacher yes, in the class. Yes, or how they how they're yeah. going to set it if they set slightly quicker. We means you're going to play, you know, slightly under. Mm. Things like that. It's so important and so interesting to hear you say that because it's like a, it's like a conversation. You're trying to yes. work out mm. who you're talking to. Uh, so your your conversation is going to flow. It's a bit like first dates, isn't <laughs> it? That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most unusual thing that you've ever uh, been asked to play for plies? Plie. I've been asked to do a plie on a five once, which was down, two, three, up and down two three wow. up wow. and i can't remember what i played but i'm i'm not sure how good it was oh. i don't think it was very good but it, it it sort of worked i think the teacher was trying to go for musicality at yeah, the time yeah yeah chris th- did we had somebody with mazooka didn't we oh yes I, do you want to tell this story or shall i tell it you do it okay <laughs> so there was a teacher who was teaching the class and he said oh, i've been thinking a mazooka is three yes yes it is a plie is a three four I said, yeah it is it's like I could use a mazurka for a plie. I said, well, yes, well, you could do, but musically and lyrically, it's not really what we <laughs> would go gonna for. It's not going to benefit, no, yeah. really. Let, let's take, you know, famous mazurka palea. Yum, ba dum, bum, bum, ba dum. It's, it's not really <laughs> singing to me, you know, a, a lyrical tune. So I wasn't playing this particular class. It was on a weekend. I knew one of my colleagues was doing it. And I saw him on the Monday. And he, he sort of takes me to one side. And he's like, "You'll never get what guess what this <laughs> did this week." And he's like, "He did his <laughs> plie with a <laughs> plumbing mazurka." So I just sort of oh. laughed. I knew what was coming up. Saw the teacher later on that day. He came and gave me a big hug. He's like, "Chris, Chris, it worked. The mazurka for the plie <laughs> worked." <laughs> like, did it work musically or did it work in terms of counts? He's like. I think with the counts. <laughs> <laughs> we had a teacher, she wanted just a code, a very minimum note. Yeah. Okay. All the way through. And it was quite nice. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do that every single class, but as a one off thing, it was very beautiful in a way. Mm. That you know, you just have like one chord or one note, mm. and then everybody just go plie. So is that I, every bar or every couple of bars? Can you remember? It was up to me, so I was okay. just kind of looking at their movement. But you know, so sometimes I play like minim, so every two bars, uh, two two counts. Yeah. Or sometimes just you know each count. Okay. And then you can just put like a small notes in between if you want to. Right, like passing notes. Or passing yeah. notes, yeah. Mm. But it was quite, in a way, artistic. Mm. And it was quite interesting. I have a little story as well from a valley teacher. This was an open class. And he said, we're going to do this little experiment today for the plies. He says, for the, we're going to do first side and second side. But for the first side, can you play as sparse as possible? You know, yeah. and I think I played the theme from Gone with the Wind. Okay which is just really, just really, really held back. And he said, when we go on to the second side, then you can really go for it and just see what happens to the dancers right. in the room. And of course, for the plies, they're re- I know dancers really enjoy doing the plie exercise. It's their bread and butter. Yeah. So, and I love playing it because I know they love doing it. And so I like to help them and indulge as much as them, you know, because they're doing all these lovely stretches and lovely big bends mm. and, you know, all this, that and the other. And so when when I played that this particular exercise, you know, kept it really sparse on the first side, really held back the accompaniment and the tempo. And then on the second side, you know, fill that keyboard and really use it all. And it makes them listen. It makes them go more. It makes them really, you know, commit to the second side. Yeah. And, and that's what I think about when I'm playing plies. I just want to match their energy and their intention and how much they're indulging in their exercise because... You know, you see it, don't you, when dancers yeah. love doing their plies. Do you, like, when you play for the open class, sometimes you see the the dancers, they just sing along. Yeah. I love that. Plie, yeah. I, I love really it. think it's very sweet. <laughs> and I love open classes because they are living their best life. Yes. And, and I'm music. helping them live yeah. their best life. It's brilliant. It's so nice to it's, be involved with. It is, isn't it? It, it is. It's great. Do you know what I like about plies? And I have a, 
a, a real soft spot for them. It's almost like a little, I'm having an affair with plies, Kiko. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> I remember nailing plies once and I was still really young. You know, I'd done the, I'd done the contemporary years and I was now like a couple of weeks into the ballet years. And I understood that it was only three positions, not four positions. So I chopped out 16 bars and it was the first exercise that I'd played that I knew that I nailed, I had the understanding of it. And then since then, it's always had this sort of like little sweet spot in my heart because I nailed it. And I just remember this sort of like, you know, I felt very proud of myself that I understood <laughs> what my job was and what my, you know, I didn't realize I'd be doing this job for, you know, the next 15 years plus. So I, but I still remember that feeling of thinking I could do this. If I understand this, I can do it. And then, and it's the first thing in the day. So yeah. it's like you want to, I want to smile first thing of the day. I want to do yes. something that I want to do something that I enjoy playing. Did you enjoy your plies, David? I love them. Today. Those years as a dancer, <laughs> I did. <laughs> you see it when dancers love yeah. doing them. It's like a meditation, really. Is you know, like yeah. if you're saying Akiko, it becomes a meditation. You're going inside yourself to feel what your body's doing, but you're also trying to communicate outwards and live with the music. Yeah. So you're you you really are inspiring us as dancers. Yeah. And I really, really love it when the teacher crosses the phrase in plies yeah. and mixes up the port de bras yeah. with grand plies and demi plies. And it, yeah, because they want to say they want to miss out the grand plie in fourth because yes. it's, a, it's a bit hard first thing. They, you know, they cross the phrase and it all comes back and it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Mm. I do love it. I like it when you get both sides of plies because it means I can, selfishly, it means I can be really indulgent. Yes. And I quite like, you know, if there's 64 bars on the first side and if there's a little eight in the middle, just to think, okay, right, I'm going to go somewhere else, but I don't know where I'm going to go and how are we going to make it work? Yeah. I, love, I think that's what yeah. I like about the job. It's, I don't think there's many jobs as a musician where you're going to walk into a room and you've got, you've got a rough idea what you're going to be asked to play, but you don't know 100%, yeah. do you, until no. sometimes seconds no. before you start playing the piano. Yeah. And I th for me, that's what keeps it fresh and exciting. For me, actually, the play exercise is one of those things I'm thinking about on the way to work. Yeah. It's one of the mm. things I'm just literally going through in my repertoire in my head and thinking, what do I know that I've not played for a while? You know, because that's mm. the, the one of the things that I can sort of plan for. Yeah. Not the you know. coffee you're thinking about. <laughs> I've already got my coffee in my hands <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Who goes to work without coffee? That's... But I remember, like, you know, like, as Chris said, that, you know, you can't really expect what's going to happen in a studio until you know on the spot so i remember when i started the job i was absolutely tired after one class mm. i just wanted mm. to go and have a nap yeah and then like three classes a day was just wow. torture for me first year i mean it's okay now but it was really difficult i remember so how long akiko did it take you to build up that stamina to get through those three, you know a, a number of classes without feeling tired I think one year. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt that recently, having really? not played. Well, that's interesting. And coming back to it, obviously coming back with an injury as well. Yeah. Um, I just feel like muscle memory was lost a bit right. and my strength, yeah. the big waltzes, yeah. you know, so, and it obviously it will come back. And the dexterity in the fingers, you know, oh, the intricacies the of, mel of melodies. Of off. Exactly. Really? Yeah. yeah. Within a week, like we'd, Akiko and I are off on holiday next week for a few days. And I know I'm not going to play the piano for a week. We are going to feel it. And then when I go back into the studio on the Monday morning, I know I'm going to be wanting to really get out the tune because I haven't played an instrument you for a week. You feel like you're playing with like gloves on and yeah. mittens wow. on. Or like you've put your finger inside a sausage and you try to be yeah. dexterous. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't work, does it's, it? it's a funny one. <laughs> and the backache you're going to have. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. And then, well, it's funny you say it took you a year because, I, like I said, I've been doing this job for what 17 years and i still sometimes have a nap in the afternoons <laughs> <laughs> brilliant um, so yeah Good. so david what's your favorite tune for plie exercise oh misty oh, <laughs> oh we yes. all play it we all now, okay play from it. now on everybody every single ballet pianist you go around the world we'll play misty for you <laughs> you'll go to hong kong next summer oh. and they'll be chucking misty out for you <laughs> mr hobson already indulges me already so i'm really <laughs> grateful what is everybody else's favorites i don't know i've got I've got a couple of greatest hits. I've got a bit of a Queen medley yeah. for a few tunes, so that's quite good fun. Yeah. Um, I think ultimately, more than the Queen, actually, is Oasis don't look back in anger. <laughs> because it's Northern. I think that's <laughs> what it is. And it's a damn good tune as well. Waving the flag behind the yeah. piano there. And it works on a four and a three. Um, so mm. for me, in, what about you, Kiko? 
I love um it's a bit seasonal, but I love playing a snowman for Priya in Christmas time. Oh, I just feel festive lovely. and it's oh, beautiful. Yes. <laughs> I, at Christmas time, actually, I start with this, some little uh, ostinato in the left hand, and then I start playing the theme from Home Alone, high up on the keyboard. Oh, yes, I do that too. And they all <laughs> just look yes. at me like it's some magic. <laughs> all that's missing is fairy dust coming down with the and some sparkly and lights. That choir as well, they sing on it. <laughs> it is magic what you do behind the piano. It's brilliant. <laughs> So that's it, Valley fans, for another episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Join us next time where we'll be discussing the Tondu exercise. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe via your podcast provider and catch us on Instagram and Facebook at the Ballet Piano Podcast to ensure you never miss an episode. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Sayonara. Bye.